So good afternoon friends. We will be in next few minutes talking about the some of the basic vaccines. BCG, hepatitis B, polio and PCV. Friends, when this topic was first given to me, I was thinking what we will be talking about. But as I started preparing, there were lot many issues and a lot many questions that came to my mind. So, I am happy that this topic is given and I am more happy because I had been given this light panel. The panel of Dr. Jaydeep Chaudhary from Kolkata, Dr. Gopa Bandhu from the Bhuneshwar and our own Dr. Nishal Bhatt and Dr. Umeshupadhyay. So this is a combination of East and West. So we start with the first vaccine, BCG vaccine. The BCG vaccine is more than 100 years old. This was invented way back in 1921. And this was invented as an oral vaccine, not as an injectable vaccine. So first this vaccine was tried in a in newborn baby whose mother has died just after the birth of the baby because of tuberculosis. Thereafter, there were more than 50,000 vaccines were given between 1921 to 26. And you will be surprised the mortality rate the difference between the vaccinated and unvaccinated was huge. It was just 1.8% in the vaccinated group, while in the unvaccinated it was 25%. To celebrate the 100 years of this vaccine, postal stamps were also released by many countries. So let us now come to the day-to-day -day scenarios that we come across in our practice. We start with our guest Dr. Gopabandhu. A four month old comes to your clinic for not having a BCG scar. The BCG was given on day two of the birth. What will you do? Sir. Hello. Good morning. And uh, this is a four month old uh, infant comes to your uh, our clinic with the BCG without any BCG scar after taking BCG. This is yeah. the scenario. Yeah. Because we have seen that uh, all the children who, take, who took BCG, they don't have a scar also. Around 10% of cases, we don't have a BCG scar also. That does not mean that immunization is a failure or that uh, BCG infection is not work. And uh, it has been proved that in, in this uh, scarless uh, percent that uh, LMI if you do the lymphocyte migration elimination test in that case also they are perfect. that means they are having also immune response or immune but uh, sometimes we, we may require a second dose and uh, as for the IAP in India Academy of Pediatrics we can repeat uh, a second dose if there is no scar and it should be minimum 6 months after the first day so so to summarize the, if there is no scar, doesn't mean there is no immunity. However, with a given a chance of about less than 5% who do not develop immunity, you can go for the BCG for the second time, but not before completion of six months. <laughs> Sir, if the, still after the second dose of BCG, there is no scar, what to do? What? If the after second dose of vaccine, there is no scar, don't repeat again. That is the last. Yeah. So maximum two doses of BCG, not beyond that. Okay. <coughs> so Nisha, an NRI family is going to settle in Mumbai. They know you. They call you in Ahmedabad. So parent inquires about BCG vaccination of, for the nine month and five year old child. What will you advise? For sure, if they are going to settle in India. We have to give BCG to both the children because IAP recommend that up to 5 years you can give BCG. So 9 months and 5 years both should be given BCG. But we must explain them the process of BCG followed by the star development and occasionally sometimes some side effect which is local. But we must give BCG to both the children. And what 
Investigation you will advise before giving a VCT? But uh, just uh, one line. For nine month old baby, without with, uh, having any investor, you can go for VCT directly. But for five years old uh, child, I will do like this. I will give a mother because you are in Amitra and I will do a mantle stage. If it is negative, then I will give this. IMT says no mantuk test preferred before a BCG is required. Give immediate BCG to this child. Yeah. So no investigations before giving BCG to anybody. Anybody. And uh, Nishal sir, what will be your, your approach is that this family is going to stay for only a couple of months, two to three months. Your approach is same or different? If the frequency of their visits are frequent and they are every time going to stay for two to three months. Suppose only once. This is the only time they are coming to India. Uh, I still definitely will give this issue this time. Yeah. Because there are all chances of... because India is a tuberculosis is endemic country even today. So there are all chances of them getting in contact with the tuberculous, active tuberculous patient. So always give them a chance that we should offer them a decision. Go up with this. This is a four month old girl with a swelling in left axilla, progressively increasing. There is no constitutional symptoms. What is your primary diagnosis and how do you manage this? So this is an axillary lymph node uh, lymphadenitis, probably most likely to be a DCT lymphadenitis. Yeah. That, uh, because uh, the BCG lymphadenitis are two types, one is operative and one is non operative And if uh, it is non operative in the course of the nine months, and usually it gets uh, cured by four to six months, nothing is done, no antibiotic, nothing is required. If uh, if it's operative and the size is gradually increasing, we can have a FLAC or we can have a repeated aspiration. And uh, if uh, that fails, that uh, lastly we can have a eczema. But no APT is required. So if uh, some enthusiastic parents and some enthusiastic doctors did an FNAC and it was AFP positive, now what to do, sir? <laughs> this is AFP positive. Yeah. Still yeah. will not give a no, AKD? Because uh, BCG is a bovine bacillus. So even if it is AFP positive, not required any APT. So this was the course in the same patient. <laughs> The, there was a pus which was spontaneously, this uh, lymph node spontaneously ruptured, that pus was drained and after draining this was the size of the lymph node which is almost 50% and this is the algorithm which is given in our uh, Bible, that is immunization textbook which has been recently published. So lymph node either suppurative or non-suppurative, if non-suppurative only conservative management, if it is suppurative. Either it will spontaneously rupture or lethal aspiration. If require frequent lethal aspirations, even if you have an AFP positive, it will be AFP positive, of course. You do not require any antibiotics, do not require any antituberculous therapy, or even sometimes somebody has tried local installation of antituberculous therapy, which is also not recommended. Nishasa, this is on the right side. Lymphadenitis. Is it because of what? Most probably uh, it is because of some other infection which is developed on the right side. Because the first question, what first question you will ask to the, this patient? We'll see for the BCG scar by inadvertently some uh, has given it on the right side of the lymphoid, right side. Then so, that this might be a BCG lymphadenitis. So, do not just straight away say it is right side, it is not because of BCG. Just look for the scar, whether it is on the right side or the... Uh, again, Dr. Nishar, the BCG was accidentally given in the thigh is an IM injection. Now what will happen and how do you counsel the parents? Like in the last case, if it has been given on right shoulder, sometimes it can be given intramuscularly BCG. Most probably the local side will develop some kind of swelling or some suppurative uh, lymph, uh, local swelling. We have to counsel the parent more because this is not going to harm the child at all. And after some time, definitely after six weeks, 
we can definitely repeat a BCG intradermally on the left side of the elbow shoulder. The most important thing is this human error. We must counsel the parent and assure them that this is not going to be harmful for the child. And again, of course, no anti-tuberculous therapy. A young mother do not want to give a BCG in upper arm due to some cosmetic reasons. What will your will be your advice? Because uh, only in the site of uh, injection for BCG is only uh, site me kya hai sir? Koi kahi bhi laga to? Ni koi bhi nahi laga sakte because that the actually the effects effect in the efficacy of the study is not there in the other site. Only the BCG is given. So, would you not have a reports of any efficacy or effectiveness if a BCG is given at any other site? So, do not give BCG except on the left upper arm. Dr. Nishal, any advance in BCG vaccination? This is a 103 year old vaccine, same vaccine we are using since years together, mid century. Any advance? There are many, there are more than 15 candidate vaccinations which are being developed across the world and they, they are different, whole kill cell vaccines, adjuvanted proteins and recombinant subunit vector vaccines and can be used in a various strategies like prevention of TB dissemination in adolescents and adults as a booster dose. It can be also given to curtail the um, Time of the therapeutic regime of antitubercular treatment, these are also being, uh, uh, and there are three vaccines which are in phase three trials already, and they are definitely coming up with very, very many things. And as immunotherapy adjuncts, also it can be used in a very big way. So, there are many advances in BCG which is going on, and maybe in future we will have some of them. Go <laughs> uh, can BCG be offered to an infant who is on INH prophylaxis because the mother is on tuberculosis therapy? Yes, can be done. Yes, do do. Though BCG is resistant to INH, you should give BCG. Nisha, BCG have and protective efficacy and against any other disease than the tuberculosis. Yeah, it can be used as... We recently the, used against corona also. See, there are two things. It can be used for leprosy and there are two other things like nephrotic syndrome and greater cancer also in uh, experimental status. In COVID, the study which was done where it was proposed that BCG can prevent COVID the study was done when developing countries were not testing the COVID very rapidly. So it showed that developing country in which BCG was given was showing lesser severity and the uh, mortality of the COVID. But over a period of time it was proven that this is BCG itself is not protective but it was because of the timing of that study has proved that it can be a protective. It has generalized a protective efficacy against the respiratory illnesses as a general, but that not is. as an against individual disease. That is a term that is called a brain So that is because of that. So again, it's generalized against the majority of the respiratory diseases. So now let us move to the next vaccine, if it is B vaccine. This vaccine was developed initially as plasma derived vaccine way back in 1880s, thereafter recombinant vaccines came, then there were different development further progress with regards to the hepatitis B vaccine and this was the development with regards to the indications of the vaccine. Initially it was given only in high risk individuals, then it started with for the infants, then started for the older children. Then for the adults, then the birth dose of hepatitis B came and now it is recommended for all including adults if they are not previously immunized. Now other two expert panelists are sitting quietly. So let us start with the Dr. Umesh. We have a preterm 32 week 1.8 kg had developed a sepsis, received multiple blood transfusion, PRC, PCB, IVIG and whatnot. 
they are now vital is stable at six weeks, about to discharge. What will be their status of BCG, OPB, and hepatitis B vaccinated? Now, we can give uh, BCG in clinically stable data between uh, 32 to 36 weeks as per uh, study data. And uh, we can give OPV also for a better seroconversion in uh, next dose of IP. And uh, in hepatitis B, <coughs> there is a uh, two uh, recommendations. Ideally, less than 2 kg immune response uh, is less uh, in hepatitis B in one month of age. Uh, after, if uh, weight is non gain uh, above 2 kg and uh, one month, still the one month of age, then uh, we can give hepatitis B. But as per recent uh, purple book, we can give in pre-term also hepatitis B, but count as a zero dose. And next, uh, we have to give uh, three dose. So all three vaccines can be given: OPV, mucosal immunity, no issue; BCG, T cell immunity, no issue. As far as the uh, hepatitis B is concerned, usually is not preferred before uh, less immunized uh, below two kg of weight, but beyond one month, even if less than two kg, can be given. And as far as the latest uh, recommendation from the ACBIP, even in less than 2 kg free time if stable can be given. Of course, do not count that dose, but give hepatitis B. Jadip sir, <coughs> if in this case the mother is HBSE as a positive, what should be your most appropriate schedule pertaining to the hepatitis B vaccination? Number one, IVIG within 12 hours of birth plus three doses of hepatitis vaccine, one, two, and six, or IVIG within 48 hours with first dose of hepatitis B vaccine with three more doses, one, two, and 12, or IVIG tw within 12 hours of life, first dose of hepatitis B vaccine along with it, plus three more doses, six, 10, and 14. What will your preferred one? See, the IV, uh, HBIG, immunoglobulin, we have to give at the earliest. So, ideally within 12 hours, that we have to give. Then, the usual hepatitis B schedule that we are giving for any newborn, the 0 followed by 6, 10, 14 weeks, that we have to continue. And uh, up to what age you can give the IVIG if not given within 12 hours? At, at, I mean, it's ideally the, at the earliest, but, de is but def earliest. definitely, definitely we can give up to 7 days. So, preferably within 12 hours, officially up, up to 48 hours, there is some chance of protective efficacy up to 7 days, but beyond 7 days probably there is no advantage of it. So, this is the preferred schedule. Now, if Again, JD sir, if the immunoglobins are not available, what will be your choice of from these options? See, here uh, the four doses we have to give. Now, in this case, we have to give, of course, the zero dose we have to give, then at one month, two months, then at nine to twelve months. Now, the point which comes that in our routine schedule, we give at 6, 10, 14 weeks. But here the case is that we have to give another dose at 9 to 12 months. So, there is yet no indication of 5 doses of hepatitis B vaccine. So, we have to give the 0. We have to give uh, at 6, uh, six weeks or at 10 weeks and maybe we have to delay the last. So that will be a last dose will be a boosting effect. What will be the protective efficacy if both this hepatitis B immunoglobulin and HPV is both? Given? If both are given, then the efficacy is quite good. It's nearly ninety-five percent, near nearly hundred percent. Of course, it's not hundred percent or ninety-nine percent. But uh, if we do not give immunoglobulin, even if we give four doses, then the efficacy is much less, around seventy percent. So here the efficacy will be 70 to 75 percent instead of the 90 to 95 percent. Dr. Umesh, next quest for you.
in this same patient should one check the seropositivity up with regards to the anti hbsg levels in such babies yes when uh, ideally uh, between 9 to 12 months till around 1 year so uh, it should be done around 1 year but remember if the initial schedule is because of any reason is delayed minimum 1 month after the last dose even if that is beyond 1 year not before that uh, umesh do we need boosters as a regular routine we have taken three doses uh, as a routine general individuals not as a doctor or not as an intensivist uh, we have taken three doses do we need a booster later no in uh, immuno competent children or adult uh, do not need any booster dose after a three dose so who will need uh, only uh, immuno uh, compromised children or adult uh, and uh, people who are on renal dialysis as well as children suffering from uh, 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 some immuno uh, therapy or uh, cystic fibrosis Uh, celiac disease, uh, like uh, on uh, uh, cancer chemotherapy. So any immunological disorders, because of any reasons, one should definitely give a boosters or repeated checkup should be that. JD, immunoglobulin one dose or two dose? What? For it, apart from hepatitis B positive mother, general population. General population one dose. just i mean before we go to that i just yeah. one word one word about the booster dose of hepatitis b often we encounter uh, older children adolescents coming for they are going to study abroad they have to get a hepatitis b vaccination to uh, one more dose and all that now here the norm is very clear if somebody has received at least three doses of hepatitis b vaccine any time at zero one six months and at any time if uh, uh, this uh, blood test was done and if the titer is above 20 any record then we need not give hepatitis b vaccine ever that titer means any time if even if it was done long back and now the titer is below 20 about 10 then also this person doesn't need any booster but so is there routine no booster no booster definitely. no this the situation comes because many children they go out for high study but if there is no record of titer above 12 and now it's done which is showing low titer then we can very well give one booster so these are uh, apart from the immuno compromise this is a situation which might yes and the immuno globulin one dose two dose right now okay. health care professionals uh, we will come to that later is it in regards to the general population See, immunoglobulin even in immunocompromised one dose is sufficient. But if we uh, we check the immunogen, except 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 when it is not. Sometimes sometimes they may not zero convert even non non responder non responder no zero conversion. Then we may give one more dose of immunoglobulin. So but if you are not one non responder to the hepatitis B vaccine because of any reasons. then immunoglobulin is not one dose it is two dose but that not after that exposure no that is after exposure to hbs after yeah. not after hbs not routine no. only then do you will do a, uh, such frequent titers not otherwise whether uh jd uh, you can you may get it doesn't matter post vaccination testing is required in any individuals we have taken three doses do, should we go for a post vaccination not testing? not routinely not not routine and home it is required immuno compromised all immuno compromised all uh, or the no. high high risk exposure high, all high risk, risk exposure. individuals exposure including the health yeah. professionals all all immuno compromised because of any reason whether hiv whether hemodialysis whether on chemotherapy whatever Uh, Mesh, this is a 15-year-old uh, male child who got an accidental break from a needle used by the father, who is an HBSG positive. The boy has received three doses of hepatitis B vaccine during infancy, but zero conversion is not documented. As as I said, they believed in Dr. Jaydeep and they didn't go for a uh, zero conversion testing. 
So now the situation is that x is dental pre. What should be the best course of action? First, uh, any of them? Check uh, antibody. Anti check for the NTHSB uh, antibody status of the patient and plan your accordingly. accordingly. Okay. Now the antibody is not detectable. What should be your best course of action? Uh, immunoglobulins and uh, booster dose uh, of the various B vaccine. Okay. So if the antibody is not detectable, you should take, doesn't uh, just rely on a vaccine, give immunoglobulin also and again a booster dose of vaccine. Your antibody both comes after 48 hours. Because no. So whatever, suppose by chance. It comes within two hours. Depends. So, where you are and where, how you are sending. I am telling you this is that we are wasting very important time by doing the report. So, should we, if suppose it's you or suppose it's my daughter. Now, so I, I will come to the that. Student, so should we not do the vaccination rather than wait for the antibody? In case of health, uh, uh, this, uh, according to risk of exposure, health worker are high risk. I will come to that. So, in our medical science, there are always three options, positive, negative, not known. If not known, it should be treated as positive. So do it. Give it. Yeah. So this is a, I don't know whether it is visible clearly or not, but do not worry. This is a diagram which has been given in purple textbook. These are the, in the left column there is an uh, vaccination status of an individual, vaccinated, not vaccinated, antibody tested, not tested, positive, negative. And on the top column, the status of an exposed source, whether positive, negative, and what course of action you should do. This has been beautifully given. All situations are covered. So this also proves that if it is positive source, your antibody is not detectable, you should give it one dose of immunoglobulin with a booster. Now we move on to the another vaccine, a vaccine, polio vaccine. This is a newspaper of way back 1955 when the polio was discovered. Gopa Banduji will take the first to the polio. And this was the cue to take the vaccination and get this certificate, a polio pioneer certificate from the government. So, Gopal Manduji, do, do you have a stock of OPV now after almost 80 years of polio I don't have polio, oral polio stock in my clinic. You do not? Do You do not use it at all? Uh, usually, the uh, past rose they are given by the government or get regularly. After that, polio, OPV is not required. So, what, to your opinion, what will be the indications of polio, OPV? Oral polio, one dose. One is the back dose. dose should be uh, zero dose should be uh, continued, and uh, that after that uh, we are using three doses of IPV with combination uh, vaccine, and after that at uh, uh, one half year and five years. Okay, so OPV has only two indications: one is birth dose, and second is pulse polio. Rest all should be replaced with the IPV. Uh, Udmesh, yes. government IPV schedule is three dose now, two dose initially, six and fourteen, and third dose at nine months. Initially, when only two dose of fractional IPV was given, we used to say give one more dose of intramuscular IPV. Now there are three dose of FIP. Should we continue that recommendation or should we that be a change? Now, uh, three dose of uh, FIIP, so no need extra primary dose in uh, private, for private practitioner. Uh, according to Anand Bandhopadhyay's study in 2020, that is a, a uh, study in 10, 14 and uh, 36 week, zero conversion between uh, IM, uh, IP and uh, uh, intradermal IP. So, uh, the comparative zero conversion rate type 1, type 2 and type 3 polio virus are same. So, no need to extra 
those uh, after cleaning the tiles. So no more primary IPV. But then what about booster? Booster can be when is there should be given. Booster should be given. Booster should be given. How many boosters, sir? Only I think they are giving a nine months. Only they they can be admitted by five years. Not one and a half year. My other experts, whether the same opinion or different opinion? There are chances of you losing time before four and a half months. So it is better to give one booster at one and a half. Even and even another, if, another even if you are sure that I will follow you, give it one and a half year and both. Both boosters is must. I am not talking to you for the vaccination of the booster, fast booster, because you will go to the government. Do not talk to you. But then, then, in that case, will you call the child to give you a booster? Yes, sir. Definitely, yes. In one and a half month, no, one and a half year. One and a half year. 100%. It is strongly recommended both boosters should be given as well as five years. Now, the issue is the standalone IPV is not available. What you will do? And child is not, uh, parents are not affording, they do not want to go for a combination vaccine. I heard we have to send to government for FIAP or at least uh, as per WHO, at least one dose we can give at 14 weeks uh, combined vaccine. For initial primary. Primary. In primary, you can give the last dose as a combination. Dose. Dose. 14, 14, weeks. 14 weeks. 14 weeks should be kept. And there is one more option. You can give it free. <laughs> any role of IPV, Gopabandhuji, beyond 5 years, any, any indications or any requirement beyond 5 years, totally not needed. Routinely not needed. Routinely. Then when? Special condition. Special condition that traveler is going outside. In that case, you can. Outside? Transport? Outside Ahmedabad? Where? Outside India. Outside India. Fine. So, international travelers going to the polio endemic countries, they are required to give polio vaccination. Initially, it was IPV. Last time, it was OPV. Within last one year, of traveling all polio endemic areas. Sir, one Australia yeah. uh, new recommendation is a every 10 years uh, IP booster dose uh, for healthcare workers and uh, laboratory workers. So, this is Ideally, yes, because adult polio is very well known. Many well known individuals they have got adult polio in their life. So, ideally speaking, there is of course no official recommendation, so I cannot speak from the, uh, this side of the table. But, uh, sir can definitely say, I am not, I am on this side of the table, so official recommendation is of course not that, but all adults should receive one IPV. So, sir, what will you do? It is not available anymore. It is not available, it will be available. We will ask theorem people to do it again. <laughs> so that, <laughs> sir, any role of tetraxim at nine years? Suppose child has not received any IPV, any documented IPV is not there. Nine-year-old child IPV is introduced in government since last four five years. So at that age, if tetraxim is available, tetraxim beyond seven years is yeah. not required. But in, uh, they have license up to twelve years in foreign countries. Even then, so even then. So up to seven years, if you can give it. Seven years, uh, only up to seven. It's not beyond that. Five more minutes, sir. Yeah. And last, a word about the NOPV and SIPV. Novel OPV2. This is a oral uh, polio vaccine, but uh, for a type 2 uh, polio virus. And this is the advantage of this is even less chances of uh, mutation and very, uh, very less chances of CDB. And uh, S for IPV is the uh, seven IPV, and uh, this is advantage because seven strain of polio requires less frequent 
biosafety is a reliable for production. So mass production means so there will be more availability of the vaccine. So we move to the last vaccine, PCV vaccine, and you will be surprised to know this is also a more than hundred year old vaccine. This was first discovered way back in 1911. Four valent polysaccharide vaccine was discovered and thereafter seven valent polysaccharide, 14 valent, 23 valent polysaccharide and then came the conjugated vaccines one, one by one. And recently we have a two uh, conjugated vaccines for in India itself, PCV10 and PCV14. And these are the different PCV brands which are available in the market. First four are available in the Indian market. And these are the different serotypes. You need not remember right now because it is there in every textbooks. So do not worry about uh, to remember the chart. Uh, we move on to the Dr. Nishar. NIP uses 2 plus 1 schedule in, for PCV. Cost effective, of course. Why not in private practice? Can we use it? The best vaccine scheduled for private practitioners is 3 plus 1, that is the primary dose and one booster dose around 15 months. The government, because of creating a cost effectiveness Can as we well use as. It or not? Ideally, we should not use because there are chances of type A will be less zero converted and 23F also will have less zero conversion and there will be a gap of boosting between the second dose and the booster dose for ch chances of child developing So we know you cannot use in your personal clinic and uh, Dr. Jedi, the child has been vaccinated in 2 plus 1 schedule in the Angarwadi now they had approached you for a booster at one and a half year you will advise PCB Ideally, it's not required because, Why? because the two doses uh, in the government schedule act as the timing and the third dose because it's given at nine months. That's more than six months gap. So it acts as a booster. So routinely, uh, and, uh, and it's unlike fractional IPV, it's the full dose which is given. So on a routine practice, a booster of pneumococcal vaccine is not required. So only during the period in between. 14 weeks and 9 months, the child is less protected against these two strains, 6B and 22, 23F. But once the booster is given at 9 months, the protection is almost same. You do not require a further booster at one and a half year. Any age limit? Yeah. For, Different brands. For the PCV13, there is no age limit because it has been licensed from 6 weeks to almost in all adults. For the PCV 10 of GSK, it is 6 weeks to 5 years. At present, the newer PCV from Serum Institute of India is licensed by IAP for first year, but DCGI is already licensed is to use for 2 years. Whereas the new BE vaccine, which has been just tested and screened for primary series only, so it is 6 weeks to 2 years. The booster dose details are still yet not out, but as soon as the time will pass, the child who has received the first primary dose requires the booster dose, the I think data will be available to so us. So at present, your upper age limit is as Dr. Nishal has said. So I will not repeat it. Any heart effect? Yeah, PCV has got heart effect. That has been seen uh, since it was introduced. Even the seven valent va vaccine when it was introduced and the coverage was more than 80%. It was seen that uh, it had heart effect. and. Incidents in adults of the vaccine serotypes came. And uh, last, uh, just a word about the uh, high risk individuals. How many vaccines should be given in a high risk individuals? Which vaccines first? Of course, uh, PCV should be given first and polysaccharide next. Which PCV? 13. 13. If, so, no. PCV 13 should, is only allowed. There, no, no, no. There, 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 is, there is some caveat to this. Now, if somebody has received the complete codes of any PCV vaccine, and if that yeah, compromised person is below 5 years, no need to give any additional PCV vaccine. Beyond 2 years, we give one polysaccharide vaccine. If required, one more polysaccharide after 5 years. If somebody has crossed 5 years, has received PCV vaccine full course, then uh, we can straight away go to polysaccharide vaccine. If beyond 5 years, incomplete schedule, one dose of PCV 13, then go for polysaccharide vaccine. 
if not at all received PCV <laughs> above five years, give two PCV thirteen, then go for one. And the minimum duration between PCV thirteen and the fifty years with twenty three is eight weeks. Yeah. Huh? So only these two vaccines are allowed: PCV thirteen and PCV uh, PPV twenty three. Mini first PCV thirteen and then the polysaccharide vaccine. Minimum gate is eight weeks. Uh, if for an adult as a routine, if given beyond sixty five years, then there will be a distance of one year between these two and vaccines. And not more than two doses of PCV twenty three is required. In lifetime. So friends, with this, my time is also. A, about to be over but with the advent of newer technology advent of newer inventions we look forward to the time in our lifetime when the vaccine will be spread over large surface area of of a city and all those individuals residing in that city will be protected against those disease wait for that time to come but whatever the situation do not forget to take a selfie whenever you are being vaccinated because otherwise it will not be effective can i give a comment of course yes <coughs> see last few years i find there are a lot of questions on private a person individual moving from government sector to private and vice versa many a times see many a times the clear answers are not available so however i can make a statement between a government schedule that is an nit and a private time table or a private schedule marriage is not possible But living arrangement is possible. <laughs> so therefore, whenever a person moves from a government sector to a private sector, you treat him for individual protection and give all the age-appropriate doses which you would have been giving to a normal child attending your clinic. So this way, we can avoid that arbitration we have most of the time, including me also. We find difficult answering these questions. So I think only. One situation where we approve of living is this immunization schedule, shuffling between the government and national. Absolutely yes, sir. And the, this is the ever-changing science. So today uh, we will be talking about whatever the answer. Maybe in next conference we may say something else because it is an ever-changing science. Thank you, every uh, everyone, for a patient hearing, and I thank my old learning panelists, Dr. Jaydeep Choudhury, Dr. Ommesh, Dr. Nishar, and Dr. Gopal Banduji. Thank you all.